Can you love yourself even if you don't like your body? Well, you can try, right? You can love who you are on the inside and you can try to separate that from how you feel about your outsides, but we are our bodies, right? We are body, mind, spirit, and microbe as well. Did you know that for every human cell in your body, you have one resident microbe? Yes, you are half human and half bacteria, and that's not even a bad thing. Our resident bacteria help us with digestion and immunity and brain function and so much more. How do you feel about your body now that you know that half of it doesn't even belong to you? It makes you feel kind of funny, doesn't it? Well, there's more than one way to look at the human body. So you can look at your body as a host for microbial life, You could look at your body through the lens of popular culture, which tells you that there's this hierarchy of bodies ranked according to attractiveness. You can look at your body through the lens of medical science, which tells you that healthy bodies are somehow better than unhealthy bodies. Or you can look at your body through the lens of biology, and you can recognize your body is absolutely brilliant. Like if your body was a machine, There is no way you could run all those moving pieces. It is so complex and so intricate that it would take a supercomputer to get a handle on what it's doing for you every moment of every day. So why do we reduce it to how it looks? Hi, I'm Amy Waterman. I am the host of Your Brilliance. I am a firm believer that our bodies are miracles. So why do we keep fighting our bodies for not looking the way we think they should when they do so much for us already? In this video, I'm going to share with you my three top tips for better body confidence. I'm a science geek, and so I spend time every single day reading up on the latest scientific discoveries. Like I just finished the book, How Emotions Are Made by neuroscientist Lisa Feldman Barrett. Read it. It will blow your mind. I also just finished listening to a series on gut immune health, all about the gut microbiome. Again, mind blown. And then I hop back onto social media to check what's going on. And it feels like such a letdown to see people still harping on about weight loss and who's hot and who's not. That's the least interesting part of the body. But we live in a culture that doesn't want us to see our bodies as miracles, but rather as displays. So we display our body for the approval or disapproval of others. And we even start to absorb those judgment ourselves until we forget what it's like to live in our body And we only care about how our bodies look. So we think our body is good or bad based on what we see in a mirror. Now, I'm not buying that. And it was my experience as a parent that really woke me up to the toxic consequences of gossiping about other people's bodies. My daughter went through a stage when she thought she was fat. This was back when she was eight. And what kicked it off was visiting her pediatrician who told me to keep an eye on her BMI. And I had to explain to her that the doctor wanted us to cut back on the treats and eat a little bit more healthy food. And she got really upset because she thought the doctor was criticizing her. She thought that she was doing something wrong. And it didn't help that the girls in her class were also bragging about being skinny. Like, yes, at such a young age. Now, my daughter is built like me. And actually, we're both built like my paternal grandmother. We've got big rib cages, big arms, flat chests. And these days I call that an athlete's build. But back when I was a kid, it just meant that I was bigger than the other girls. I had this big chest and big arms and big legs. Now I'm fine with it now, but I hated it back then. And I didn't realize that my daughter was starting to notice that her body was something other people looked at and judged until not long after that doctor's appointment. The first sign I had that something was up was when I would ask her if she was hungry and she would say no which was strange because she was usually hungry. And then for dinner, she started asking for something light like soup. And eventually I figured out what was going on. I asked her about it and she confessed that she thought she would lose weight if she stopped eating. And so we talked about this and a whole lot of emotions came pouring out. Feelings that I remember having as a girl, though maybe not that young, right? In attempting to make her feel better though, I had to confront my own past. And I remembered all of those things people told me, no, you look beautiful, that never made me feel any better. It doesn't solve a child's problems to tell her she looks beautiful. 
because she knows how she looks, right? And she knows whether it matches the images she sees in the movie she watches and the book she reads. Later, I learned that the best way to raise children with a healthy body image is not to talk about how bodies look, but instead to talk about what they do. And that's a lesson I think we as adults need to hear sometimes too. The experience of living in a body is so much more interesting and useful than looking at bodies because bodies were made to keep us alive and they do this brilliantly. Now, if you are 30 years of age or older, chances are much of what you learned about how your body works is wrong. Research today is overturning so much of what we thought we knew about the body, like this idea that we only have five senses or that everybody has the same emotions or that the brain has no immune system. So my first tip for any of you struggling with body confidence is to learn more about your body. Find out what's going on beneath the surface. Discover all of those secrets that your body's been hiding and you will be amazed, I promise you. My second tip is to learn how to support your body. So I don't spend time on websites or read books that mention weight loss. Like the minute I see those words weight loss, I click away because I'm not interested. What I spend a lot of time on is books and podcasts and websites that talk about supporting health. I've spent the past five years doing a deep dive into anti-aging research because the goal of anti-aging is to stay healthy and live a long time without losing quality of life. Now, isn't that a better goal than losing weight? What I hope you'll see is that weight loss is not a goal that nourishes your soul. When you focus instead on supporting your body, on feeding your cells with vital nutrients, on optimizing brain health, reducing inflammation, and so on, you start feeling pretty good. And the better you feel, the less you care about how your body looks to others. It's just not important. Now, my final tip is to eliminate body talk from your life as much as possible. So don't buy magazines emblazoned with all those weight loss messages. Don't follow social media accounts that are focused on body shape and appearance. Don't buy something just because it claims to help you lose weight or burn fat. And if the people you are with are talking about how much weight somebody's gained or lost, change the topic. Now, if that sounds kind of extreme, remember that you're not just doing this for yourself, but you're doing this for all of the girls. No one should feel like they have to start dieting at eight just because they think they're fat. And we created this world, right? We created it by fixating on how much people weigh. We never even thought to stop and ask whether we were focused on the wrong thing. You should feel good in your body. You should have energy. You should be able to do the things you want to do. And if you don't feel good in your body, then losing weight is not the answer. Supporting your body is the answer. So find out what your body needs. Maybe it needs more sleep. Maybe it needs less stress. Maybe it needs more fresh air. And give it everything that it's been craving. You need to give your body more, not less. More love, more support, and more tender, loving care. And if you have anyone in your life who needs to hear this message, please pass it on. Take really, really good care of yourself. And I'll see you next time.